Father, we, we are so thankful for your word, God. It's so good. Your word is true. Lord, your word endures forever. God, you and your word are, are trustworthy. And God, what you say is what happens. God, we're so thankful you've given us prophecy how we could look back today and see how exactly what you said would happen is what has happened. And Lord, while we, as we think about what is going to happen, you've told us so much. So God, give us the confidence and keep giving us the confidence to believe that your word is true and these things will come to pass. According to your word, you're so good to us, God, and we love you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to do something before I start on this outline. I want to go back to the last uh, outline in, in Daniel. Some, I, I kind of probably went through it fast and maybe a little disorganized. And so some of you may not have hit some of the blanks. Is there anybody that needs to know, uh, didn't get a certain blank filled in? Any, anybody? Okay. All right, we're okay then. I guess it's just Ronnie. <laughs> Nobody else. <laughs> okay, Revelation 13. We talked about the Antichrist and the prophecy of the Antichrist. Now we're going to get into details of the Antichrist through the vision that God gave John the Apostle on the island of Patmos, Revelation chapter 13, and uh, let's just pray uh, one more time. Father in heaven, again, we thank you uh, for this time to study your word, and we pray for your direction and your wisdom, and that, Lord, we would uh, see things today that will make a difference in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Who do these men, what do these men have in, con uh, in common? Uh, Adolf Hitler, uh, Vladimir Lenin, uh, Mao Zedong, uh, Napoleon. What do these men have in common besides having funny names? They uh, all wanted to rule the world. Each one of them wanted to rule the world and many other leaders that couldn't. God never let it happen. But there is coming a time and there is coming a man who will rule the world. And the Bible talks about him in Daniel and the book of Revelation. We know he is called the Antichrist. Now the reason I call this rumors of the Antichrist is because of what? John talked about rumors of the Antichrist in 1 John. Matter of fact, the only time in the Bible, only place in the Bible he is, that he is called the Antichrist is in 1 John. So this is what John says in 1 John. He said, as you have heard the Antichrist is coming, it's a rumor. <laughs> You've heard he's coming. Of course, a prophecy from the book of Daniel. Even now are there many antichrists in the world. And John was saying he is the ultimate false teacher. But even now, there are many false teachers in the world. And all you have to do is turn on the television about 2 o'clock in the morning, and you'll see some false teachers sometimes. All right? His titles, let's think of some of the titles of the Antichrist. He's called the King of Fierce Countenance, the King of Fierce Features in the New King James, in Daniel 8, the Prince who is to come, Daniel 9, a vile person, Daniel 11, the worthless shepherd, Zechariah, the man of sin, 2 Thessalonians, the son of perdition, 2 Thessalonians, the lawless man, 2 Thessalonians, the beast, and again in 1 John, the Antichrist. Those are some titles. How will the Antichrist be known? He'll be known, obviously, because of his political power. I believe the Bible is teaching that there is coming a man, a man who will have so much charisma, he will have so much wisdom, he will be so persuasive, he will have so many supernatural leadership characters, characteristics, that the world in which the mess we find ourselves, this world is going to say, he's the guy that can save us out of all of our problems. Again, I said the other day, what if a guy could come and he says, look, 
I've got the answer to the problems of the Middle East. I've got the answers to cancer and COVID and heart disease. I've got the answers to all the economic problems of the world. I can solve it all. And then he began to perform miracles to prove that he had that kind of power. The world would follow him. The world would, there's no question, the world would follow him. And he is going to come. So, he will be known by his political power. Revelation 13, verse 1, Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast, of course the beast being a symbol of this man, I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like the feet of a bear, his mouth like the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. He will rule the entire world. He will rule the entire world. And the dragon gave him his great authority. Now there's another symbol in the book of Revelation. Who's the dragon? Look at chapter 12, verse 9. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil and Satan. So the Antichrist will have all of this charisma, all of this power, all of this magnetism from the devil. The devil will empower him. He will rule the world and he will receive his power from the devil. Now look at verse number one again. I stood on the sand of the sea and I saw him rising up out of the sea. The sea in this passage is another symbol. Remember, think about the symbolism of Revelation. What does the sea represent? Look at chapter 17 and verse one. Chapter 17 and verse one. Then one, I did it again, I'm so sorry. Coordination strikes every minute. <laughs> Chapter 17, verse 1. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. Now the great harlot is the is the false church, but sits on many waters. Well, what does that mean? Well, look later in the chapter at verse number, uh, verse number, let's see. I lost it again. It's nothing like it having a, a good teacher that can't find where he is. Okay, verse, thir verse 15, chapter 17 and verse 15. And he said to me, the waters which you saw where the harlot sits are people's and multitudes, and nations, and tongues. In other words, the Antichrist is going to rise up out of some nation, speaking some language. He may be out of Europe. He may be out of some other place. May be alive today. I don't have any idea. Do you? People are always asking that. Do you think he's alive today? I have no idea. But he could be. But he will rise up out of people out of just the common multitude of people just kind of growing up like me and you and then he will begin of course as a young adult to begin to show these great leadership qualities and again when you study history these world dictators seem to always rise up out of political chaos and economic chaos and military and all that stuff napoleon came up out of the french revolution hitler came up out of the chaos and the hunger of germany uh, Lenin came up out of the revolution of the labor movement in, in Russia. Out of these chaos, a man will usually rise up, and it's going to be like that as he grows up someplace in this world. And so he will be known by his political power. Secondly, he will be known by his worldwide worship. Verse 3, back in chapter 13. Verse 3. I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon, Satan worshipped. They worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast, and also they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war 
with him. This guy is a, who can be like him? And the world falls in love with him and the world begins to worship him. Look at verse 8. And all who dwell in the earth will worship him. Who's, those whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The world will worship him. The Bible says he will be amazed, uh, the world will be amazed by his wound. Again, verse number three, it says, I saw one of his heads and it had been mortally wounded. There are two different ideas about that. The, morally, the mortal wounding of the Antichrist. Some believe that he, was, he will be physically wounded, maybe an assassination attempt, and, and it's like he's dead, but he rises up again. Others believe that it is a part of the political uh, organization that he has that falls down and then rises up again. I, I tend to think more that it's kind of assassination attempt or something like that, but I don't know for sure. It's one of those things that I can say, honestly, I, I don't have a clue. Uh, but anyway, something is going to happen, and he's going to rise up, he's going to come back, and boy, the world is going to say, wow, look at that. He will, the world will be deceived by the false prophet. You see, here's the political leader of the world, the Antichrist. And he has all of the nations of the world together. One world government. And he has control of, of the military might of the world. This man, you think of all the military of the world, the governments of the world, he's going to have it all. And so he's over it all. But he has a partner who is over the one world religious system. That partner is called the false prophet. And the false prophet who is over the world religious system will cause people to worship the political leader. So look at verse number 11. Verse number 11. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. Two horns like a lamb. Like uh, he, he, he talks like Jesus, uh, or looks like Jesus, or makes people think of Jesus, but he talks like a devil, like the devil. He's a deceiver. This false prophet exercises all the authority of the first beast, the Antichrist, in his presence. And he causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs so that he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. He deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast. Telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image uh, of the beast to be killed. If you didn't worship the image of the beast, you'd be killed. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or name of the beast or the number of his so this false prophet is over all religion and he also is over the economy and gives that power of the economy to the antichrist so that people if they don't take the mark of the antichrist they can't buy they can't sell and so you go to kroger and you go to check out and they say do you have the mark well no well i'm sorry you can't you can't buy that food you can imagine that. You can't buy shoes. You can't buy a car. You can't buy anything. But it's the false prophet who has that kind of economic power and, and gives it to the, uh, the Antichrist. So the Antichrist has all of this power. I skipped a little verse there, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hurry. But I skipped a little verse there. Go back to verse number 2, talking about the Antichrist. The beast, beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. Where's that bear, and leopard, and lion come from? Daniel chapter 7. Four great beasts come up from the sea, each different from the other. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. The second one was like a bear. The third one was like a leopard. And so Daniel sees those, those beasts. And now John is seeing them backwards. And so John is saying, this Antichrist is going to have all the power of, of uh, Medo-Persia, and uh, Greece and, and Babylon all put together. He'll be more powerful than all the other nations that have ever existed. Four, thirdly, he will be known by his military might, verse number four, 
So they worshiped the dragon and gave authority to the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast, and who is able to make war with him? Who's going to declare war against him with all of his mighty uh, armies? And it was granted to him, verse 7, it was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Great military power. Political and military scholars today say very soon China will be the number one military power in the world. Not the United States, but China will. But China ain't going to last very long. So this guy is going to have a much greater military than China or any nations of the world. Fourthly, he'll be known by his vulgar vocabulary. Uh, look at verse 1. I stood on the sand of the sea. I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. A blasphemous name. And again, think of horns. We talked saw that in Daniel, ten horns. That's his power. It's his power. The heads referring to maybe parts of his government. I'm not sure about that. But on his heads a blasphemous name. Look at verse number 5. He was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. Verse 6. He opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and those who dwell on the earth. Have you noticed, I'm sure you have, how vulgarity is becoming more and more open today. Words that would never have been dreamed to be allowed to say in public. Everybody says those words. The president uses that language. The athletes use that language. The movie stars use that, that language. Uh, just filthy, filthy, vulgar language that has become very common. And I believe the devil is setting up the world so that we get used to that kind of language when the Antichrist comes. And he uses that kind of language to blaspheme God himself. What a language he's going to have. And yet he's going to be such a tremendous speaker. Listen to the words of Erwin Lutcher, the pastor of Moody Memorial Church. The Antichrist will be an attractive and charismatic figure, a genius, a demon-controlled, devil-taught charmer of men. He will have answers to the horrendous problems of mankind. He will be all things to all men, a political statesman, a social lion, a financial wizard, an intellectual giant, a religious deceiver, a masterful orator, a gifted organizer. He will be Satan's masterpiece of deception, the world's false messiah with boundless enthusiasm. The masses will follow him and readily enthrone him in their hearts as the world's savior and God. He'll be known by his commercial control, and I mentioned that a moment ago, the false price, the false prophet gets this control where you have to have the mark of the beast in order to buy and to sell, and, uh, and the, the Antichrist ultimately has that. I know the question comes up, well, what about this image of the beast? And here's the beast, the Antichrist, but there's this image of the beast, uh, and it sounds like it's, I don't know. <laughs> I've heard people say, well, it sounds like something from Disney World, some kind of mechanical thing. I don't have any idea. We've all probably got ideas, but I don't have enough to even say. But it's some kind of a, of a thing that is not the Antichrist, but it represents the Antichrist, and it is very lifelike. I guess at one time we would have said, well, that's television, an image of the person. When you see TV, you don't see a person. You see an electronic image of the person. I don't know. I don't know. All right, I'm going to finish like this. I'm going to share a conjecture. A conjecture. That means I'm going to tell you what possibly this could refer to, this one world government. We've all heard of the European Union. It is the political and economic union of 27 member states located primarily in Europe. The headquarters is in Brussels, Belgium. It was founded in 1993, November the 1st. The purpose of the economic union is the goals of the EU are to promote peace, the Antichrist will bring peace, its values, and the well-being of its citizens. It will offer freedom, security, and justice, now listen to this, without internal borders. Here are these different nations of Europe and 
This economic union, the goal is to eliminate the borders so there'll be no France or Germany or Italy, just one big nation. There are 27 uh, nations now in the economic union. You remember hearing about Brexit. We saw, heard so much about Brexit uh, last year. That's, uh, that's England or the United Kingdom breaking away from the economic union. So they did that. And when they did, their economy went down the tanks. But uh, listen to the nations that are in the economic union. Belgium, France, Germany, Italy, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Denmark, Ireland, uh, Greece, Portugal, Spain, Austria, Finland, Sweden, Hungary, Poland, uh, Ro uh, uh, Romania, Croatia, and about nine more. Now, is that what he's talking about? That the one world leader is going to come out of Europe and maybe the European Union is kind of the foundation of that one world government? can't say that I know that. I don't know that, but I think it's a possibility. I think it's a possibility. And I remember the words we all do of Billy Graham. You can take the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other and read them together. So it's just a possibility. It's just a thought. Okay? But it's something to think about. I'm going to stop here, but I want to mention two more books. I read this about Erwin Lutzer, what Erwin Lutzer said about the Antichrist. Erwin Lutzer is the pastor of the Moody Memorial Church in Chicago. You can still hear him on the radio uh, running to Win. There are two books that every American ought to read by Erwin Luther. Number one, Hitler's Cross. Hitler's Cross. And number two, When a Nation Forgets God. There are little paperback books about that thing. I don't read big books. I just read little books, okay? And so, this is what Erwin Luther does. He goes back to Germany in the 1920s and 30s and shows how the, the, the culture, the society, the economy, the politics of Germany, after they were defeated in World War I, the politics of Germany paved the way for Hitler to rise. And he talks about the parallels between our nation and today and Germany back in those days. It is astounding. It's astounding. It's almost like reading a newspaper. I would encourage you to read those two books. All right, thank you so much. Yes, sir. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right, so what we're going to do is just for the next couple minutes, if you have a, a question that's on your heart, oh, sorry. just uh, lift your hand up and Brother Holly can call on you and I'm going to sit down so he answers everything. I'm sorry. So if you have a question, just lift your hand up, and if no one has one, then, then we'll, we'll be dismissed. I'm going to call on those I was instructed to call on. <laughs> right over your head, dude. Hey, I told him I'd do this as long as I can answer them like this. I don't know. <laughs> those three words, I'm always ready to do that. But you may not have any questions. Anybody got any questions at all about anything we've talked about? Yes, ma'am. I, I, I left that out, didn't I? And his number is 666. Six, six, six. Six. Yeah. So what does that refer to? Okay. Again, there's all kinds of different ideas. I think the one that I have read that makes the most sense is that remember three, those, those symbolic numbers in Revelation, three is the number of God, six is the number of man. Man was created on the sixth day, not the seventh day, because seven is the perfect number. Man is never perfect. So man, the number six, God, the number three, it seems like maybe a man who claims to be God. That seems to be the most uh, reasonable thing that I, I have read. That, that, that may not be right at all. Down through the years, people have said, they, well, we'll take a guy's name, and if he's got six letters in each name, he's probably the Antichrist. Ronald Wilson Reagan. So somebody thought Ronald Reagan was the Antichrist. There's some difference. Holly, Samuel, Miller, six in all, all, all words. Okay, anybody else? Hey, sir, Holly Anderson. Looking through the book of Revelation, you know, I've always looked at it as when I can take it literally, I want to take it literally, and the word is obviously symbolic. Any, any words of counsel as you're reading through? 
I love what Adrian Rogers said. He said, find the symbol and then believe literally what the symbol stands for. You know, that's, that's what you're saying. The beast is a symbol, but the literal truth that the beast stands for is the Antichrist. Chapter 12, the serpent or the dragon is the symbol, but it tells us that the meaning behind the symbol is the devil, a literal spiritual being. So sometimes in Revelation, it tells the meaning of the symbol. Sometimes it doesn't. And that's where it's so hard, isn't it? And I wish I had more insight on, on how to figure that out. And I really don't. If you, you try to trust the Lord and go through it and read what other people say, I'm not, I, well, I love to read what other people say. And because and, uh, I'm not too bright and I read what they say. But it's just a lot of questions. Yes, ma'am. That's the way I read it. Yes, that's the way I read it. I, I hear a lot of people today talking about that and thinking they have the wrong idea. <laughs> I've heard people today saying it's probably the COVID, uh, the COVID vaccine. Uh, that's, that's, there's a Greek word for that, you blow. <laughs> okay, because I've taken the mark of the beast if it is. I'm in big trouble. Absolutely, that's what it's about. You know? I can't buy, okay, I'll worship you. That's one of the things in that book uh, about Germany that Luther wrote. They found out in Germany, if the people become so dependent on the nation that they have to trust the nation in order to eat, they will do anything. They'll do anything. Yeah. Hey, thank y'all. Thank you for being with us, brother. Well, hasn't has these, these sessions in the morning, haven't they just been wonderful? They have been wonderful. It's too bad that Brother Holly has to go home here soon, tonight. We want to keep you, brother. I hope you'll be back tonight. And uh, as we're back tonight... We're just going to celebrate together, hear the word of God together one more time, and come ready to respond to God. Will you do that? Will you come ready tonight to respond to God? There's still a chance for you to invite somebody, to bring somebody, tell somebody they need to be here. So will you do that for me? Let's stand together and let's close in a word of prayer. God, we just thank you for the richness of your word today. God, for you sending us someone that can take things that are so difficult to understand and just plainly explain them to us so that, so that we can understand them. We thank you for that. And God, our trust is in you. Lord, you are the one true living God. And we thank you for sending your only begotten Son, the true Christ, who died on the cross, was buried, and raised again on the third day, has ascended on high to where he is seated there at your right hand, Father. And Jesus, we worship you. We lift high your name, and we say, Lord Jesus, come soon. We believe you're coming. And Father, thank you for sending us the Holy Spirit. Greater is he that is in us than he who is in the world. Thank you for sealing us and for never leaving us nor forsaking us. And God, Jesus, until you come again, help us to live faithfully for you and to be obedient to your word. We praise you today, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thank you for being here. We are dismissed.